Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about parsing Power Virtual Agent's dates using Power Automate. Let's go. So I want to introduce a new feature of this channel called Ask the Audience. And this is the result of some of the interaction that I've had with you, the viewers, on the channel itself. And certainly I'd love to encourage more because at the end of the day I'm always looking to find new ways to provide value to you folks. And so in this case, today's episode was inspired by a request that was made inside of the YouTube comments. And so I figured, why not? Let's formalize this segment. And certainly I'm going to try to do the best I can with this going forward. So the, the idea here is if there's something that's relevant for you, chances are it's going to be relevant for others. Now with this feature, I do want to caution. There's no guarantees I'll get to it. There's no SLA. So if there is something that is super timely, I'm not going to sort of guarantee that I'll just drop everything to go ahead and do it, but I certainly will do my best to, to help you out. So do take that into consideration. And also note, like there's certain areas of the Power Platform that I'm just more comfortable in. And so as a result, if you ask for things around Power Virtual Agents, Power Automate, that can include the API-led automation or RPA, Power Platform Governance, or even Azure Logic Apps, those are all areas where I feel I can provide a ton of value. If you're going to be asking me questions about Power BI or even Power Apps, there's going to be other people in the community that are better able to provide guidance in those areas. Now, what's, what am I asking in return? Um, and actually not that much. All I would love to see is you help support the channels, whether that's through likes, subscribes, sharing it with your friends. So that's all I'm asking for in return if I do go ahead and address one of your segments. Now, today's Ask the Audience segment comes from Ashrit. And so Ashrit was looking for a way to go ahead and parse a date that was being passed in from Power Virtual Agents. And in addition, he also had a subsequent question where how could you then go ahead and add, say, a couple days from that actual start date? And so that's what we're going to focus on today is we're going to go ahead and retrieve a date from Power Virtual Agents. But then what we're going to do is strip off the timestamp because that is included whether you provide it or not. Once we've got that removed, we'll then go ahead and add multiple days to that start date, provide an end date, and return that back to the user so that you don't have to do that all of that calculation yourself. And so why is this, this content important? And I think it's important kind of when mentioned it already, but when we do receive a date and we don't even include the timestamp part of the date, it still comes across and that's what's highlighted here in purple. We get zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero. And that may cause issues in downstream systems if it's only expecting a date. And so that's the whole essence of this. And then the other thing is we're gonna talk about two different expressions that exist in Power Automate that can actually help us with this. One is called Formate Date Time. The other one is going to be called Add Days. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. All right, so let's go ahead, let's dive right into a demo. And so I'm in Power Virtual Agents. I will run the demo for you and then we'll jump into the details inside of Power Automate that shows exactly how this was done. So what I've got is a topic and the topic will wake up whenever I provide trigger phrases such as paid time off or PTO. We will then go ahead and ask the end user what is the date they'd like to start their PTO. And then note, this is where I'm going ahead and using an entity that's provided out of the box called date and time. 
And so this is the only one that we do have. It's not like there's a separate one for just dates. And this is the nature of why we have the timestamp that trails our date itself. So we'll ask for the end user to provide a date. We're going to store it as a variable called PTO date. And we can see that it is of type date and time, which is great. Next, we'll say, how many days do we want to include in this paid time off? And then we'll provide a question and we'll store that value in a variable called numDays and we're gonna, it's gonna be of type number. So great, we've got typed data coming back to us. We will then go ahead, pass it to Power Automate and then we will retrieve or receive a response from Power Automate, which we will display here um, on the chat canvas itself. So let's go ahead and let's run this. So here I'm gonna go ahead and wake up the bot. And now I need to provide a date for when I wanna start my paid time off. And so tomorrow is gonna to be June 1st. So let's go ahead and provide that date as our starting date. Now we're gonna be asked how many additional days do we want to include in this time off? And I'm gonna say four days beyond the initial date. And then what we're gonna see is a response coming back from Power Automate of the fifth. So let's go ahead, let's just take a quick look at a calendar and we can see that tomorrow is the first and that uh, four days later, our end date will be the 5th of June. Okay, so that's great. That's working exactly how we would expect it to. Now let's flip over to Power Automate. Here's where I'm gonna expose those different inputs for my trigger. So I've got my date, plus I've got my number of days. Now I've broken this up into three parts. You could reduce the number of steps here, but I really wanted to show this for illustration purposes. So what I've done initially is I want to capture the original PTO date, but I only want to capture the date, not the timestamp as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this specific expression in order for me to go ahead and, and parse that information. Now let's put this in notepad and increase the size just so it's easier to, to be able for you to digest it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this value here, PTO date time, and I'm including it as my source field or source data input. And then what I'm gonna do is say, go ahead and format it using this format. And here you can see we're excluding the timestamp portion of a date time. Now, I don't have to type this in manually myself. I can go ahead and use the dynamic content. And that's what's happened here is when I go ahead and select this piece, let's just delete that. I can go ahead and click PTO date and that's where that value is coming from. So that addresses our initial date that's been inputted and I'll show you the run history so you can see this all in action here shortly. The next thing we wanna do is address the add days component to this. We want to be able to say for this starting date, now go ahead and add your additional days. So once again, let's just head over to Notepad, we'll paste this in. And so what's happening is we are taking the outputs from this compose action. So that's where this is right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to add the days that were passed in our trigger. And that is this specific value right here. And so once again, you can pull this information from your dynamic content, but just to show you how the expression lines up itself. Now, the problem with this approach though, is when we go ahead and run this function, we get a timestamp that is appended to our date time. So what we do need to do is we need to run this through once again. And the difference is we will use our compose add days action here as our input, and then we'll reformat it once again. Now you could probably reduce this down to two steps or maybe even one step if you wanted to concatenate all of these different expressions, but I wanted to keep it simple and so you could see it step by step how this works. Lastly, what we'll do is we will then output these values from Power Automate back into Power Virtual Agents and we will pass out pass these uh, compose actions uh, that basically will give us our value. So here we've got the first compose action, which was just getting our initial date and removing the timestamp. And then the PTO end date, this represents this action right here, the one we just talked about, where we've gone ahead, added the additional days, and then basically reformatted it once again so that it's very clean. 
Now let's head over to our run history just so you can see this in action here. So here's our inputs and as you can see we have the timestamp and we have the number of days that were passed in. Then what's going to happen is we are going to run that first expression. We're going to get just our date which is exactly what we want. Now what we want to do is add those additional four days to it and so when we do so we're now going to line up with the fifth which is next Friday. The issue with this is that we now have this timestamp that has been added. This is just a byproduct of using that specific expression. So now what we need to do is we're going to take this input, this as an input into our uh, last compose action where we're going to format out the timestamp and be left just with the clean value that we want. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then output this and we're going to include some markdown. That's what these stars represent and these backslashes so that we have a nicely formatted response message in our conversation, which is exactly what we see right here. So that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any scenarios that you want me to go ahead and try to attack, put them in the comments. I do my best to follow up on the comments itself. And if it's something that I can address, I, I certainly will do my best to do so. So thanks for checking out this video and we'll see you again next week. Take care.